In this video, I'll be showing how to launch virtual machines on OpenStack using the trystack.org service. Trystack is a free site where you can try out OpenStack. In order to use Trystack, you'll need to join our Facebook group because that's what we use for authentication. There is a button on the front page and once you request access to our Facebook group, we try to process that pretty quickly. Once we've approved your account, you can log in and begin using the service. When you log in, you'll see the main OpenStack dashboard, which shows your current usage, which is of course zero at this point. Before you can launch an instance on OpenStack, there's a couple steps you need to take first. The first thing that we're going to do is create a network. Under the network tab, I'm going to create a network. You can call this anything you want. I'm going to call it internal. Under subnet, I'm going to select the network that I want to run this on. And I'm putting in 192.168.37.0 slash 24. You can put in any private network you want for this purpose, or you can use the one that I've selected. And then under subnet detail, I'm going to add a public DNS server. I'm going to use Google's public DNS server 8.8.8.8 so that when my instances come up, they can do DNS lookups successfully. Click Create, and that network will be created. The next step is to launch the instances. Go to the Compute tab, and under Instances, I select Launch Instance. I need to give this a name and you can call it anything you want. I'm going to select the small size, which gives me a little bit more room to move around than the tiny. I'm going to boot from an image and select the CentOS 7 image. Under access and security, I need to provide an SSH key so that once the instance is up, I can SSH into it. Typically, cloud images do not have a root password, but rather you have to provide an SSH key. Now, I don't have a key pair yet. I'm going to add one. I click the plus sign to add a key pair. I give it a name, and in the public key field, I'm going to paste my SSH key from my laptop. Now this is your public key, not your private key. And we import that key pair. Next under the networking tab, you'll notice that the internal network that I already created has been auto-selected since it's the only one. And I click the launch button and that instance will be launched. Once that comes up, you'll notice that it got an IP address off of that internal network that I created, which means that it's not accessible from the outside just yet, which leads us to our next step. Over on the Network tab, take a look at your network topology. What you should see here is the internal network that we created earlier with your instance running on it, and an external network that it's not connected to at this point. I need to route between these two networks, so I'm going to create a router. Click on Create Router, give it a name. You can call it anything you want. I'm calling mine Router1, and I create that router. I need to connect it to both the internal and the external network. I connect it to the external network by setting the gateway to external 
and I connect it to the internal network by adding an interface on that network. Now when I go back to my network topology diagram, I'll see this route between those two networks. Now I'm almost done. I can almost connect to my internal network. There's one final step, and that is setting up the access rules. Under access and security, in the security groups tab, I'll see the default security group. And this defines rules that allow or disallow network access. I'm going to create two new rules on this. The first rule I'm going to create is a custom ICMP rule. And this is to allow ping. The type and the code are negative one, and this will allow me to ping that instance from the external network. And then I'm going to add a rule, a TCP rule on port 22 that will allow me to SSH to this machine. And now I should be able to connect. Going back to my instances tab, I need to give this instance an IP address on that external network so that I'll be able to connect to it. So I associate a floating IP address. I have not allocated any IP addresses yet. I will allocate one from my available pool. Associate that with this instance. I can ping that instance. And I can also set SSH to it. The username on the CentOS cloud image is CentOS. So using that username and accepting that fingerprint, I can now SSH into that instance from the external network. So that's what it takes to launch an image on the TriStack service. Go to tristack.org to sign up for your account today. TriStack is running RDO on CentOS. If you want to know more about RDO, go to openstack.redhat.com. Thanks for watching.